Welcome back. Sheila, watching Free Speech TV in Winchester, Virginia. You're on the air with Congressman Pokin. Uh, good, good afternoon, Congressman Pokin. I really appreciate you know, at least talk to one congressman. Uh, I live here in Virginia, District 26, and congressman, Congresswoman Comstock won't even uh, have a town hall. Wow. So I really, really um, am really going to be pushing with our Democratic and helpers out here in one of those uh, states or counties, you would call, that they forgot about to work my area. Mm -hmm. um, so I greatly appreciate you being on there and at least talking to people and giving us ideas. Uh, but the only idea I'm going to give, and I'm, I'm going to let it go because I, I know there's other people out there smarter than me, like Tom Hartman. He's, I mean, he's awesome. He has been so educated to me, and I really appreciate you, sir. Um, Thank you, Sheila. Your question. My, my one thing for the congressman to push to other people, actions speak louder than words, and that's how I've lived my life. And so that's that there's my message, not only just to the congressman, but uh, to all fellow Americans. Republican, independent, or Democrat. Thank you. Okay. Sheila, thank you. Congressman? Yeah, Sheila, uh, well said. And, you know, and let me say this. One of the things that uh, Indivisible has been doing in Wisconsin, and I believe it's on their website, for those who uh, may not be familiar, it's a, it's a great uh, action spot to tell you how to reach out to your members of Congress, how to make them respond to you, how to hold them accountable. And what they've been doing in Wisconsin is if people won't do town halls, they do empty chair town halls. So you can uh, help organize in your area uh, a town hall for that member of Congress who won't come, but have an empty chair and call the press and go ahead and have the press uh, have the the town hall anyway because uh, it's gotten a lot of press back home and it puts pressure on that member to show that they're not being accountable because what they're going to probably try to do is hide behind things like telephone town halls where they pick and choose the questions and you don't really have the interaction you have through a real town hall. Uh, so uh, go ahead and have your own with an empty chair and make them uh, feel the heat. I think that's the best thing you can do in a district like yours. Okay. Desiree, watching free speech in Concho, Arizona. Desiree, we have just a minute to the break. A quick question for the congressman. Real quick. While um, Congressman Pocan is on the line, but this is about health care. Um, and I've been out of Michigan now for about nine years. But when I was there in Ingham County, they had a program that was run, a health care program that was run through the county. And they provided Ingham County provided health care on a sliding scale basis to every resident in Ingham County had the opportunity to have health care through the health department. I'm speaking medical doctors, um, uh, dentistry, the whole nine yards. You could, uh, kids could get their immunizations. That could be done nationwide. We were working on a program through the National Service Corps to try and introduce that to other counties um, within Michigan. Okay. Congressman? Yeah, you know, clearly that's you know, just an example. Again, I think what a lot of us would like to see with a single-payer system. Uh, I had a constituent in yesterday who has a, a child with a disability. They now are a resident here, but they grew up in England. And after the meeting, I go, God, you've, you've got to be really glad to have escaped that terrible health care system you have. And they just looked at me and started laughing. You know, uh, let's face it, Canada, most of Europe has a system that works really, really well for people. And the fact that we're having this debate, we're a country with so many great minds, uh, tells you the politics is really skewing it. George in Swisson City, California. Am I saying it right, George? Sassoon City. Sassoon, thank you. So you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. How you doing, Tom? Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Congressman, I'd like to know, why is it that we're not hearing anything about Jeff Sessions lying openly to Congress? Why is that not being driven home? It's, it's almost uh, hardly ever talked about, if at all. Where, where are we on that? George, a great point, right? I mean, he, he lied to the American people by lying to Congress. Uh, there should be some accountability. There were calls to have him have to step down. Uh, he did the minimum, which was recusing himself from this, but that, again, is relatively minor for lying to Congress. I think, honestly, George, the best answer I have on this is while there still are calls, but you just, they're, they're not 
nearly as uh, vocal as they were at the time. It's not even weekly. It's not even daily, but sometimes it's several times a day. We've got something new to deal with with this president and this administration uh, and generally involved around scandal that seems to constantly have us chasing these things, much like the campaign. Remember, I mean, any one thing that he said in a traditional campaign would have been enough to take down a candidate, but he did so many of them, you almost became desensitized in trying to keep up. And I think right now, you know, uh, We've been doing that a little bit, so I don't have a better answer for you, George, other than uh, we still have put those calls out. I think there are still organizations putting those calls out. It's just I think as a public, we kind of move on to the current scandal of the not even day, but sometimes of the hour. Jim in Streamwood, Illinois, uh, listening to WCPT. You're on the air with Congressman Pokin. Hey, Tom. Hey, uh, Congressman Pokin. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on a uh, – there's this – uh, application. It's called uh, for, your, for your smartphone or tablet, whatever. Uh, it's called Democracy OS. Um, and in Buenos Aires, there's this uh, like net party they call themselves, and they use this. Uh, they use this app. Uh, basically, it's imagine a uh, kind of like a, a Wikipedia type of thing, where all of your constituents get to uh, weigh in on uh, topics or um, laws that you have or votes that you have coming up uh, in the um, in, in your respective body and uh, basically all the constituents all your constituents weigh in and um, you would then be beholden to vote yes or no based on what your constituents decided I wanted to get your opinion on uh, if you think a platform like that would work in the United States um, because I'm I'm a veteran and I uh, I believe I'm going to run for a local office using this as my platform and I just wanted to see if if you think that idea has any traction. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm actually looking at the – since you brought it up, I pulled up uh, on my computer the website. You know, there are um, uh, different apps right now like Countable uh, where people can, you know, send messages and keep track of our voting record and things like that. And those are all relatively new and I think very, very helpful in making people more um, – aware of what's going on there, elected officials. I think the only thing I might raise a little hesitation on is if you uh, do that, you're essentially governing by referendum, right? And if certain groups can come in there and uh, be heard on issues because they're doing uh, campaigns around it, uh, that could be a problem. And I think uh, the best example I'd give is during the Iraq war. You know, Barbara Lee was a very lone voice and a very correct voice at a time that a lot of people were uh, saying, oh, we got to get involved, you got to do something, when we know that you know, there never were weapons of mass destruction. We knew there was a lot of sketchy information behind what was happening. And uh, I, I, I see that's the only part, I think, Jim, that I, I see a problem with. But I think any time you could have a, a tool so it's easier for your constituents to respond to you and let them know what you think and be transparent, it would be great for other people to see some of this as well, I think that's a great idea. Ty, in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you're on the air with Congressman Pokin. Hey, Congressman Pokin. Uh, my name's Ty. Um, you know uh, Steve Ballmer, the founder of Microsoft and the owner of the Clippers, just uh, gathered a huge federal uh, statistical uh, document, basically about all of our federal spending, crime rates. And I was saying, are you guys going to in incorporate that more into combating fake news and all these different alternative facts Donald Trump's been using? Um, I, so I'm not real familiar with that document he's put together. What I can tell you is, in general, you know, our our difficulty is there was fake news that was being put out during the campaign, and the Trump administration very cleverly uh, decided that anything they don't agree with now is fake news. So they took what became a, a new reality that we were experiencing and then decided to make it their own reality. So the only place you get correct information is, of course, from Donald Trump, and that's where he's trying to get his followers to, to use now as a news source. Uh, but we do need to figure out how to combat that because, you know, let's face it, uh, when you start having alternative facts and facts, and, you know, it's, it's very Orwellian, uh, the direction that this administration is taking us. So um, I think we do need to have even broader than a single tool like that, but we've got to figure out some really big ways to get people back to, to realizing that, you know, we have to have decisions based on facts, and there are real facts, just like there's real science. And then, you know, some people who want to divert you from the reality are going to come up with words like alternative facts, and we need to combat those. 
There we go. Darlene in Bothell, Washington. By the way, it's two minutes to the end of the hour. Uh, Darlene, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Thank you very much for taking my call. I just wanted to, I, I'm at, I attend town halls with Susan Delvaney, and it was wonderful. And we're lucky to have Patty Murray and, and Maria Cantwell as our senators. But I would I didn't get a chance to ask a question, and that was after all of this, and Trump is no longer in the White House, and can we put our country back together again, where we will have the respect from other nations where we'll have the EPA back in place. Okay. <laughs> Just put yeah. us back together and relieve the stress that I believe everybody wakes up every day with. Is today the Ab day? Darlene, the answer is simple. It, absolutely. You know, what we learned from this election, uh, Donald Trump was not elected by the American people. He was elected via the Electoral College. Uh, three million people uh, more didn't vote for him. Uh, it's not like the people of the country have changed. In fact, I would argue, what do we see what he's done with the promises he's made and what he's the direction he's taken us? I think more people are going to wind up uh, being more uh, participants in our democracy, which is better overall. And we can rebuild those important institutions. So I'm extremely optimistic. Uh, but elections have consequences. Right now, we've got to fight the reality we have, which is a Republican Congress and a Republican president. So people have to be active and keep fighting. We're having victories. Uh, but absolutely, we can not only bring it back to where we were, but continue to make it even even better. Yeah, we have a long history of moving forward. Last 10 seconds. Thoughts for the week? Just, uh, you know, this is uh, one more week of uh, a lot of new information coming up from Donald Trump. Uh, if people keep active and engaged, we can keep fighting back. And uh, don't forget, things like Georgia 6 uh, are going to be real, I think, bellwethers of what's to come in 2018. Yeah, that's a, that was a remarkable one. I'd, I'd trust it a lot more if any of those voting machines produced a paper trail, but <laughs> it was still you know, a remarkable one. That Keith Ellison and Hank Johnson and I introduced. There you go. There you go. Congressman Mark Pocan, thanks so much for being with us today, sir. Thank you, Tom. Always great talking. We'll be back. Stick around. We're going to have an interesting conversation right after this.